I'm excited to give you this video because there's a new player in the game and they are huge and they are going to change the way that you do short-term rental. Also, here are some tips for these new channels if you're not using them yet. Hey, as a word of caution, when you go multi-channel, you'll likely be using some software and some softwares combine everybody and some just don't. So in this video, I'm advising not only do you add channels, but you look at those channels and decide which software is easiest for you. Our very first addition to Airbnb is gonna be one you probably know already, which is VRBO. VRBO is an Expedia Group product. There's a whole lot of history there. HomeAway and VRBO got their start, I believe, in Europe. There's a collection of 100 or so different websites that were bed and breakfast websites, and HomeAway came in and bought up all these different sites to unify all that inventory and all that product, creating more consumer loyalty because people could go from Sweden to the Ukraine to Poland to Spain and be able to stay in houses under one brand. It was a great idea. And then Expedia Group came in and I think bought everybody out. The cool thing with VRBO is it's part of the whole HomeAway Expedia Group ladder is it's popular. They even ran Super Bowl ads and they're valid everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So if you're in Europe, South America, United States, all of it. And they combine with one of the cheapest channel managers on the planet, which is called HostHub. It used to be Sync BNB, and at scale, if you have multiple properties, it gets super, super cheap to use them and they're very much a simple product. And the way that they connect is by connecting to a co-host account and they link all of your stuff through a co-host account. This is cool because it doesn't break nearly as often as all the fancy softwares do. So I still advise for brand new newbie newbie people who only use Airbnb and VRBO to use HostUp. There's gonna be links for both of those in the description, naturally. Things to know about VRBO, if you're on VRBO, is they don't run prices quite the same. They don't have a multi-calendar like Airbnb. They don't allow for three-day or four-day discounts like the Pro Tools stuff that Airbnb has. This is actually true for all of the other channels that I'm advising. They don't have Pro Tools, which means there's no multi-calendar, no four-day discounts, no coupons, nothing like that. But Verbo does allow you to price by the day. You could have a Monday price that's different than a Sunday price, that's different than a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday, and those repeat every single week. Verbo has come a long way on making their software easier to use. I will say that their website's much much easier to change prices on, which is way cool. Um, who knows, more updates in the future. Verbo is also less likely to screw you over. I'm sorry to just use dramatic language, but Airbnb's had some run-ins with hosts um, taking your money for no reason, cancellations where you don't get to fight for your right as a host to um, make sure that you get paid for stuff. The arbitration process is a bit nuts. And that's why October 12th, I'm doing an arbitration workshop so you guys can learn how to effectively do arbitration against Airbnb because it's a requirement now to be a host because Airbnb will likely at one point take money and you will disagree with why they did it and you'll have to fight to claw it back. And you have to do that through arbitration. So Verbo is consistent, they're reliable, they're big, they're fair, they stay out of your business. We like that, we like all that. The next one, I don't know. I don't necessarily like them a lot, but they can be categorized as a necessary evil in the community. I'm just gonna say it like that. It's booking.com. Now, booking.com is important for international markets, which includes places like Fort Lauderdale, Miami, international markets. They get more business in Verbo. They just do. And the reason why is because in Asian markets especially, booking.com is huge. I think Eastern Europe as well. The cool thing about booking.com though is they are affiliated with Priceline. And I will confess, whenever I book a hotel, I book a hotel through Priceline. And so basically all of my booking activity goes through a booking.com product, which is not international. So there's arguments for booking.com in urban markets because Priceline.com has enough loyalty, people like myself, that people are using it. So by getting on booking.com, having enough listings and having a good discount structure, you can show up on Priceline, which is way, way cool. Now the danger of booking.com is it's insanely clunky. It's old, it's antiquated, their software kind of sucks. And big and, when you first sign up for booking.com, you won't have a payments through booking.com set up and they'll make it so that way somebody can book your listing, block your calendar without paying and then never show up at your place and then booking.com is gonna force you to pay for that reservation unless you say, hey, this person did not arrive. It is highly likely that you will get a few reservations on booking.com where somebody says they're gonna show up and then they just don't show up and you'll have to go, oh, they didn't show up, and then you have to not pay, but like booking.com's 18% fee. That also blocks your calendar. So there is something called payments by booking, and you wanna get on that if you're gonna use booking.com. Just if you're not going to run your payments that way, don't do it. Cool thing about payments by booking is if you integrate with Stripe or something like that, you can get paid 
in advance for bookings that haven't happened yet, like two months from now. Somebody books your house two months from now and they pay through Stripe, you can get paid immediately even though their booking's not for a couple months. That's really cool for ramping up your cash balances. As long as you manage your cash properly and don't blow all your money, you can grow your business effectively by collecting money on Stripe for advanced bookings, way cool. And another hack, Stripe has a product that if you get enough cash every month through Stripe, they'll give you a loan on the cash that you get. Now the thing is, is it's about 20% interest and they will take a certain percentage of your money every month with a minimum, right? There's a minimum amount that they'll take every month. The terms aren't the best, but it's fast, easy loan if you wanted to take it. So Stripe has some cool side effects also. Now the big player, the new guy, the new one in town, it's Google. Yeah, Google is your newest channel. It's way cool. Now you will need to use certain channel managers to integrate into this. Zivu, Hostaway, Toki, Guesty, Hostfully, Roomkey, like there's a bunch. There's a bunch of channel managers out there and I'm not going to endorse a specific one at this moment in time. But they integrate with Google Hotels and your inventory will pop up. And the reason why I know this is so big is we had an old portfolio of properties when we were testing Zivu out way back in the day. Um, and they were like a portfolio of properties in Philadelphia. Well, we shut those listings off on Zivu, right? We're just not integrating, not taking any bookings. But we didn't shut the account down entirely. Everything was just kind of like dormant. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as soon as they integrated with Google, we started getting bookings left and right for properties that we were no longer running because they were like our first like wave of properties. And if you guys remember, in Philadelphia, I've gone through three bouts of lawsuits, all of which I would brag about if I didn't sign certain things that would not allow me to be an influencer, right? Because my hands are tied on what I can say, but I've had three sets of lawsuits with three different sets of landlords, and those have all gone in ways that I would love to talk about on this channel, but I'm not going to without my lawyer's guidance. But that means that some of our waves of Philadelphia properties no longer exist, right? So with that said, some of these very early listings that we had went live on Google and started getting bookings, like lots of bookings. So if Philadelphia does so well, um, I would imagine that other major cities will do super, super well. Because the cool thing about Google is they're everywhere, integrates with Google Maps, and also if you say hotels near me, they'll pop up. And so your listings will show up in ways that you just never thought they could. And so I think Google is going to be one of the biggest players in the game for short-term rentals to come. Because if you think about it, people get burned out on a brand. Right? You could get burned out on Verbo and just choose not to do Verbo. Oh, I don't like the Verbo experience, right? The thing is, is customers are not loyal to the host on Verbo. They're loyal to Verbo or not. So a guest could stay at your Verbo property multiple times, then have a bad experience somewhere else and just choose not to use Verbo, which means you lose that customer. Same thing happens with Airbnb. There are a lot of customers that are leaving Airbnb over fees and transparency and resolution decisions and all sorts of stuff. Airbnb grew too fast, out of their control, had issues with parties and violence and just all sorts of stuff in the media that just because they grew so well, they couldn't control all of those risks and they've burned a lot of their customer base. So if you think about it, somebody who was using Airbnb, where would they go next? Well, probably back to hotels because there is no player in the game with as much brand pizzazz to punch a hole in the market yet, but Google's already there. So people as they leave Airbnb are probably gonna go search back on Google for a place to stay. And if they don't wanna stay in a hotel, they'll find your listing that's also on Airbnb. They're not disloyal to you. They're not mad at you as the host. They were mad at Airbnb. So they'll stay at your property. They'll give you a chance again, even if it was your fault that they left Airbnb because they don't understand these nuances. Guests are going to book short-term rentals on Google. This one's way too new for me to give you a bunch of high quality, high level advice, but there are support pages on Google for both um, houses and hotel rooms. You can get listed on travel.google and hotels.google and they've got support pages on how you can do that. I'll try to put those down in the description for you in this video. Then we've got some nuanced channels that have done really well for certain people. For example, monthly bookings. You can get on rent.com. You can get on apartments.com. You can get on Facebook Marketplace. You could list on Google and Furnished Finder. I think Furnished Finder is one of the most popular ones in our industry because people know that travel nurses pay good money for monthly stays. And so as this crossover where nurses will pay on Airbnb or they'll find you on Furnished Finder, there's just a lot of like commingling there. And so people will naturally go there. But people don't think, oh yeah, I can put my place on Facebook Marketplace or I can list on rent.com as a furnished property. You can do these things where people can stay by the month. 
those are all good for monthly stays. If you have a luxury property, you got a nice one, and even now medium ones, I think Marriott is coming down on quality and opening their doors a little bit more, but Marriott Homes and Villas is a really cool underdog. I, I'm still gonna call them an underdog because I think they're undervalued in this space. People can book your home with Bonvoy points. Yeah, they can use their rewards points from a hotel to book your house. How cool is that? See, Marriott wants a piece of the short terminal game. They know that there's going to be a portion of people that want a full-size kitchen, that they want a multi-bedroom house, that they want a yard, they want all that stuff. And Marriott wants to give that part of that experience to their customer base because that creates loyalty. They know that customers will sometimes use a hotel, like I am right now, and sometimes use an Airbnb like I do other places. It depends on the city, and on the reason of travel and all this other stuff. So the best way to learn these channels is first trial and error. You wanna play around a little bit, but you can also get into groups. I've got a free Facebook group that has like 60,000 hosts in it. It's called the Hosts of Airbnb Automated because this channel used to be called Airbnb Automated before Airbnb's brand protection team asked me to change my name. So that's why it's just my name now. But go to the Hosts of Airbnb Automated, link in the description, join that group, become a part of our community and ask your questions about booking.com ask your questions about Marriott, and as we learn Google travel, ask your questions about Google, because that's where you can learn more for free. And again, if you're not in this industry yet, I have a free course down below, and I also do mentor, obviously. I am a coach, and I do a lot of that. I actually teach every Saturday for three or four hours, and I've got four other coaches in that program, so there's a lot of hands-on, one-on-one coaching for anybody who wants to be part of that more intense type of training if you're into that sort of thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. More to come as always, and I'll see you on the other side.